Namaste from India, Parabens on the 8th anniversary of the Vishwavidya Institute. Jonas, Denise, the Vedanta students have a very special place in my heart and I'm very happy to be a part of our family celebration. The last time I was in Brazil, one of the Vedanta students, João, took me to those artistic steps that are there in Rio also called Celeron steps. A very beautiful woman came up to me and said that she wanted a picture. So we took the picture and that's what you see here. She spoke about how the teachings of India had sunk into her heart and of course what struck me and I'm guessing has struck you is her tattoo of karma. And so today I want to talk about the joy of karma when it sinks into your heart and I present to you some six points to think about. Point one, karma is possible only through our freedom of choice. A donkey cannot decide whether she wants to eat a brigadero or a kanjika. Karma is action done out of choice only by human beings. And so as we know, karma gives us both visible and invisible results in the form of punya and papa. You help someone, the person is helped, visible result. You also got some punya, invisible result that sits in your karma account. That punya is transformed into sukha, moments of happiness, in the form of a healthy body, supportive relationships, good opportunities, etc. And of course, the papa is transformed into situations of sadness in one's life, not having enough support, maybe health issues, lack of opportunities, etc. Naturally, all of us want sukha, moments of happiness, which come from punya. And so we increase our karma of doing good. So karma is possible through the blessing that only human beings have been given with the freedom of choice. The second point, karma can become yoga. Doing karma can be very stressful. One always wonders, am I doing enough? Should I have done more to save the relationship? Should I have done less? How shall I decide? Our sages and masters said it's very, very simple. For any karma to be done, just consider the universal framework of dharma. Love, kindness, justice, compassion, well-being. And so we can transform karma into yoga by aligning all our karma with dharma. So rather than ask ourselves, what should I do? We change it to, what does the dharma of this situation require such that all the people involved will benefit? Only then I can ask, what should I do? How can I contribute to the situation? And so by aligning ourselves to the law of dharma, the law of karma, my raga dveshas do not matter. So, ragas are our binding likes. I must have my coffee in this way or else my whole day is spoiled. Veshas are our aversions. I hate how my father treated me in childhood. By aligning ourselves to dharma, by doing what is to be done, karma becomes yoga. And that is one of the joys of karma. Point three, karma yoga gives me prasada. One thing we have to understand that the laws of karma are not my enemy. They are not in opposition to me. In fact, the laws of karma are lovingly being shaped by the hands of Ishvara. And so the intelligence of the cause and effect relationship is Ishvara all the way. The material that is influenced by the intelligence is also Ishvara. So after the puja at home or in the temple, we receive a gift from the altar prasada. 
It might be Tirtha, sanctified water, or a sweet, or a fruit, or some tulsi leaves, or bhasma, sacred ash, whatever it is, we receive cheerfully and graciously. Why? Because it has come from Bhagavan Ishwara. So, all the situations of my life, all the karma phala, results of karma are prasada. The attitude in the temple, I extend to all of my life. So there is no special karma called karma yoga. But every karma I do, I can transform into yoga with my karma based on dharma and seeing everything as prasada. Yat karoshi yadashnasi yad juhoshi dadasi yat yat tapasya sikaunteya tat kurushva madarpanam Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer as a ritual, whatever you give, whatever austerities, disciplines you undertake, all that may you offer to me, Bhagavan says. Point number four. Karma yoga makes me a loving person. I realize that my capacity to do karma and all the results of karma are being given to me by Bhagavan. So now all that I have is given to me. I am now in a loving relationship with Bhagavan. Even if I want to break up, <laughs> he is always holding me in a very loving embrace with all the laws of karma. Point number five. Karma makes me inquire into the karta, the one who does the karma. So okay, I'm doing all this karma, but you know what? It still makes me feel limited. My identity is still limited. I am a limited doer. I'm a limited experiencer. There's so much I want to do. Is this all that there is to life, from lifetime to lifetime? No. We inquire into the reality of this karta, the doer. And then we will discover, if you haven't already, that I, you, am the Atma. I am the Atma, that limitless consciousness, that illumines all the karma, that illumines the karta identity, the one who does karma, that illumines the identity of also being an experience of whatever be the experience that you are undergoing. And finally six, atma was never the doer or the experiencer. So with exposure to Vedanta, you see that you are not what you are aware of. You are aware of the donkey, but you are not the donkey. The karta is you, okay? But you are not the karta. You are aware of the karta, the doer, her different roles, her different experiences, her feelings, but you are much more than all of this. And so there is a beautiful shift that takes place. Earlier you did karma for the sake of ananda, fullness, when the reality of the Atma becomes clear to you that I am that Atma, then you do karma out of the fullness that you are. Every karma that you do is an expression of the fullness, the abundance that you are. You were always free. So we see that when karma really sinks into our heart, we see clearly that we can do karma, lots of it, less of it, but we are ever untouched. I am that consciousness, I am that Atma. That is the basis of all karma, of all the wonderful experiences that life brings. And this is indeed the joy of karma that can be discovered through Vedanta. Muitu amor, muitu muitu amor, parabens again on your 8th anniversary and I wish all of you well and lots of love, lots of prayers. Om Tat Sat. Mm -hmm.